I've used this term a number of times, variables, and now we really kind of need to talk about it so you understand what variables are, how we're using them in uh, programming, and uh, how you can make your own and what not to do when you make your own variables. John Knuth uh, calls a variable a quantity that may possess different values as a program is being executed. So their value may vary. Uh, Naran Sahami uh, calls it a box in which we stuff things. That is a box with variable content. Uh, Wikipedia, a little bit more formal user-defined keyword that is linked to a value stored in a computer's memory at runtime. Now, I'm not going to really go down into the details of what computer memory is. Uh, you need to know that a computer needs memory to do things uh, that is different from the hard drive where you store your pictures and videos and music collections. Uh, that's a piece of memory that's easy to access and it's very, uh, um, very small compared to you know, the, the disk storage. So uh, it's called random access memory or RAM, and there's also other kinds of memory. We'll leave it at that. Uh, just keep in mind that a program is being loaded into that memory uh, and executed in there. <clears throat> that limited space is divvied up to create um, space for variables, etc. And if your program needs too much memory, your computer is going to slow down because then it needs to store things elsewhere and kind of pull things back in. Uh, so that's why some programs that use too much memory or accumulate too much memory usage over time uh, slow your machine down and sometimes they need to be uh, stopped from execution. Cool. So it's a set of boxes here. I stole that off the internet um, that you now has a name. So each of these boxes here has a name. Um, perhaps how big the box is tells us something about the type, right? So different types of variables uh, might require different space. For some, you might only have to save yes or no, or true or false. That is a very small amount of space that is needed. For other variables, you might have to uh, save many, many different uh, kinds of information. Uh, so you probably need uh, different sized boxes. And last, what is in the box? So what is the value that, that we put in? Right. So this box here, for instance, is called toys. It is of a pretty large size, but we still don't know what kind of toys are in there until we open it up and, and look inside. So that's really the concept of a variable. How or what do we call the box? Uh, how big is the box? What is in the box? So we think of a name, a type, and a value when we talk about variables. And uh, you can see that they can you know, live peacefully next to each other. And uh, if you think of this image here as computer memory, right, uh, they're probably aligned in similar ways to you know, reduce the number of, uh, of kind of empty space and make most efficient use of the, uh, of, of the available memory. So it's like a, like a Tetris game, if you remember that. Cool, so let's go through these three concepts of uh, name, type, and value and uh, talk a little bit about what that means. So if you give a name, it must be valid. Uh, there might be rules in your programming language. For instance, in Python, variable names must begin with a letter. They can be followed by any combination of letters, digits, and underscores. Uh, they are case sensitive and do not use any kind of reserved keywords that are parts of the language. So followed by any combination of letters, digits, and underscores means that a minus cannot be used in a variable name uh, because it has a different meaning in the language. Subtraction, right? it cannot be part of the name. If you have a bunch of letters here and then a minus and another bunch of letters, Python is going to think that 
first bunch of letters is a variable, second bunch of letters is a variable, and you're supposed to subtract the value of the second bunch of letters that's stored in the box from the first bunch. So be aware that there can be errors and uh, that might result in, in interpreter error messages that you aren't quite prepared for. The names should be meaningful. Ideally, they speak to you. For instance, something like length glacier or glacier length. Uh, ideally, we don't use single letters like A or X, like I have been using in my examples. It's bad practice, um, unless you're following a paper or a textbook, right? So often we are in a situation where we have some model, some formula that we want to implement. Uh, we look at a paper where the math is spelled out. And in that case, it's a lot easier to add a comment saying, this is from paper such and such in 1985. And then you just follow their, um, their naming scheme as much as you can, because then it's a lot easier to compare uh, the, the equation in the paper to what you coded up. Generally, though, for all variables, we want to be using you know, names that are easy identifiable, uh, easily identifiable, so we do not run into issues of like, what does A mean here? And you can see that there's some uh, formatting that can happen here, right? Um, you can use, for instance, underscores or camel case. To, uh, to form these kind of longer uh, composite variable names uh, that supports reading. Uh, ideally, you stick with one, doesn't matter what, uh, which, just stick with one. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, all of your variables are gonna be easy to detect throughout your code. There are a lot of style, style guides on this. Uh, the bottom line really is Use valid, meaningful, consistent naming and your good variable names. Variable types. What is the type of a variable? We well, can start out by thinking of sets of numbers. So, so natural numbers, whole numbers, uh, real numbers, right? These are sets of numbers in math. And you probably can imagine that if you're storing only natural numbers, so non-negative numbers, for instance, starting from zero through infinity, that takes less space than uh, storing all, all whole numbers, so including the, the negative numbers here, or that is going to require less space than uh, storing floating point numbers, when all of a sudden you can have an infinite number of uh, significant digits behind decimal point. Okay. Uh, so the type refers to how values are represented in computer memory and how much space they require. Uh, Python is dynamically typed, so the type of the variable is allowed to change. In some programming language, you say glacier length is of type integer, and never throughout the uh, runtime of the program can you put 12.5 as glacial length because you defined it as an integer, a whole number. If you want to change uh, the, the nature of the variable glacial length, you need to go back to the beginning and instead of integer, uh, call it um, float, for instance. And then you can store 12.5 or 12.54567. Okay. Uh, Python, you can have a variable that, you know, and in one case here starts out as a string. Uh, you take some text, you stuff it in there, and if you're interested in figuring out what the type of the variable is, Python provides you with a type, and then you give it the variable name. And uh, if you print it, you get class string. So this is a, this is a string right now. Uh, it stores many characters. Uh, or then, you know, this is the same variable here, but now I put 42 in it, and now the type of it changes dynamically during the runtime to an integer. So it's not interpreted as a string anymore. That is, uh, is going to be important uh, in some um, 
context that we'll talk about too. Next, there are two kinds of types. There are primitive built-in types that come with Python, for instance, Boolean, integer, floating point, complex. It has a, uh, a built-in type for complex numbers. Uh, the current total list of uh, existing standard types is behind this uh, link. You can go to or you can just uh, search it. And then there are non-primitive uh, built-in or self-made uh, types, so sequences, iterators, classes. Uh, classes are often things that we make ourselves. Those are more complex uh, types of, uh, of variables uh, that uh, come perhaps with uh, additional functionality, for instance, uh, some way to access uh, different elements or add elements to uh, to a list of values. Okay, the bottom line here is that uh, dynamic typing allows you to get away with not knowing much about types. So if you start out with Python, you really don't need to understand types very much until you do need to understand it. So here's a very made up simple example, but I, I'll give a variable x the value three, uh, variable y as the value 12, and then I say c is x plus y. Well, you might call that idiotic because clearly this is a string and this is an integer. Why would you think that you could add them up? Right? And this is what the interpreter here tells me. Clearly made up example, but think that in some context in your program up here, you're defining x as three. And then there's a bunch of stuff happening here that you don't care about. And then in the next line, you're reading y here from a file. And maybe everything is being read as a string. So in your mind, everything that's in that file is integers. So you shouldn't have any problem adding x and y so that's why you write this down here but again now this is your semantic mistake you did not consider that python might interpret the stuff that it reads from a file as a string hence turn x uh, turn y here into a string which is great at runtime like everything works right it only fails when you all of a sudden try to do something with x and y together and then uh, it tells you that you can't add string and integer. And all of a sudden, you're left wondering why the variable y here is a string. And then you have to go back through a lot of code to figure out uh, where it was first defined and, and so forth. So made up example, but very real, happens quite often. Uh, be, be aware of the dynamic typing. Uh, don't panic. And uh, you'll, you'll be good. Okay, last point is value. Uh, what is the value of a variable? It's the thing we put in the box. It could be 23, could be pi uh, to some precision, right? Uh, false, true. Uh, the value can and really should change during the runtime of the program. If it doesn't change, if the programming language provides you with that, um, you could uh, use a constant. Right. Uh, you could define pi to some precision as a constant, uh, and, and then the program could handle that, or the programming language the interpreter could handle that somewhat differently. So in general, if you're declaring a variable and assign, uh, assign a value, in general, you, know, you might have to give some type or not. There's a val uh, name here, and then that gets assigned the value, uh, or you could have a, a type and a name and then some kind of expression. So expression could be, well, like we had in the slide before here, right? An expression, for instance, is x plus y. C doesn't exist yet. It's being made here. And the expression that makes the value of C is the addition of x and y. Cool. In Python, you know, simple example here is my new variable is 10. Uh, in the shell, a TC shell is different from other shells uh, that we get to later in the, in the course is you need to use the word set. Uh, then 
the shell interpreter knows, oh, this is a variable that's being made and uh, expects a value here, okay? To access the values, which is also called dereferencing, uh, you simply use uh, my new bar anywhere in the uh, in your program. So we've done that already with X and Y in the previous slide. Uh, in the shell, you have to use a special character, uh, the dollar sign, uh, to identify that there is a variable that is coming now. Okay. Simple, simple to remember. The last thing I want to touch on is uh, the question, what is this? You'll come across that in various um, flavors during your, during your career as a programmer. So what is happening? We are, like this is a statement that we just saw, right? This is assigning a value. So my new var gets a value assigned here, which is the old value of my new var. We are dereferencing this value, and then we are adding one to it. So if my new var was five, and we are adding one to it, and then we take that and stuff it into the box that is labeled my new var, and now it carries the value six. Uh, we call this uh, increments or decrements if it is a minus. Some programming languages have uh, special signs for that, like a double plus or a double minus. Just uh, think about it that way, that you're just replacing the old value, add one to it, and then you have the new place to store the new value into. Uh, this is sometimes a little bit confusing. If you start out programming, it really shouldn't be. You're just adding one to a thing, which is useful in loops and many other uh, settings when you're counting things.